Right, welcome back. I thought I'd just do a short video today on power mics. Echo power mics. Now, back in the day, back in the 80s, it was all the rage to have a power echo mic. You were really somebody if you had uh, gone past the restrictions of the factory mic that came with your CB radio and you got yourself one of these. Now, as time went on in CB land, uh, power echo mics uh, got to be a little bit loathed by many. Uh, because it was seen as shouting above everyone else on the band and uh, <clears throat> it was also linked very much to some of the sideband and the illegal activity uh, and those operators that were going about back in the day so it was a little bit frowned upon anyway this is an example of a microphone from that era which is the voice lab PAM 27 uh, it has a basic uh, PTT on the side fairly well constructed although I, I see now a little bit of a glue and a, a repair has been done on this one and uh, uh, I don't know if you can see that a, a little PTT light comes up when you push to talk so um, initially you know, when you turn this round you can't see any way into the unit until you read very carefully uh, the words open on the back of this screw case so uh, one would assume I've not took this apart yet so you're seeing this with me for the first time this little thumb wheel unscrews and uh, reveals inside well, a fairly clean, a fairly clean case, and uh, a nice Panasonic battery, which we will test just to make sure it's okay. So there's actually a fair bit more going on inside the, uh, the microphone than I uh, first thought there would be. So um, what we'll do is we'll just um, remove the circuit board and see if we can. Uh, try and decipher just what's going on. This is currently wired for uh, an Amstrad uh, CB radio so um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it apart and uh, then we'll do a quick uh, test with it on the air and you can see exactly how good or how bad this thing sounds. Right, what have we got on the inside? Well we have a small condenser microphone and obviously that's going to be coupled in to one of these ICs on the board. There's our PTT button. There's our slider for the volume control of the effect. Now the echo effect is generated inside by the uh, a, a chip, which I'll show you shortly. And I imagine, we'll, we'll test this theory out, that this uh, potentiometer here adjusts the level of the echo. And obviously that, that'll be then fixed. And then you have a variable control over the power on the, on the front of the device there. Right, so in the top right hand corner here, here's the bit that uh, provides that lovely echo that everybody loves. This is the Sony CX7932, which is a echo delay uh, chip, quite an old uh, device now, long obsolete. So if you do have one of these and that goes, I think you've probably, you've probably had it. Now there's a, another Sony chip in here, I'm not quite sure what that's for, uh, and I haven't identified the, the number off of that one, but down here, is the actual dual op amp that's used uh, in the device and uh, that uh, obviously uh, takes your signal in from the microphone element uh, probably processes it through the echo device and then pops it back out on the microphone line to the radio so we plug the uh, plugging the um, microphone directly into the PC there and just going to run a few tests and record it with audacity and play it back for you so you can see how good or how bad it sounds. This is recording with full echo. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, which is the preset turned to maximum. Four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog testing. Recording with the preset turned to minimum. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. I was quite surprised. It sounded half decent on the uh, on the PC, but um, my recollection of echo mics was that they tended to make radios over deviate, and uh, we've got a little bit of repair to do on the plug on this one first. So we'll do the little repair. We'll reassemble it. We'll plug it into an Amstrad 901, and then uh, we'll get Randy to have a little listen to it just to see if it's. Uh, any good or not. It's quite amusing getting that uh, all tucked back in there due to how close these wires are. 
Never mind, hopefully I'll never see the back of this again. We've cleaned the microphone up, it's come up nicely. And uh, we've got my uh, recently uh, modified, or say modified, returned from uh, modified um, 3000 Mustang. I'll just show you the board that was in that. The uh, It had a mid-band modification board. Uh, yeah, I've got a few of these. Uh, they, I seem to be collecting them. I've got other ones. And it uh, seems to be a waste, waste of good components, really, doesn't it? Because... Uh, if they come to me, they get removed. So um, there we go. Right then, let's uh, go and sit the Randy downstairs or away from this one and uh, we'll see what this sounds like. In the voice lab, PAM 27, echo power mic, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, testing. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it interesting. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.